Hello everybody, it's Madam Nasra. I'll be with you in topic two in history subject form theory, special form theory, which is titled Colonial Administrative System. Colonial Administrative System is the series of the events which occurs during the establishment of colonialism. As we can see, the first topic was establishment of colonialism. So, during in the process of establish, establishing colonialism in Africa, colonialism first started to, to scramble for and partition for African continent. After that, after after success, after the succeed to scramble, then they divided our uh, African continent by themselves, among themselves. The next, the next, the next issue, the next process which followed was the colonial establishment of colonial administrative system. Why colonial, why colonial administrative system? In order to rule, you have to, you have to be with the administrative system. So, background of the colonial administrative system. Colonial administrative system with the, were the ways of controlling and maintaining colonial power in colonies after the establishment of colonialism. That after the establishment of colonialism, the next, the next issue, the next thing they done is to establish the colonial administrative system in order to control and to maintain the colonial power in their colonies. So, colonialists, including German, French, British, Portugal, Belgium, etc., after colonizing African countries, they introduced the different administrative system in their colonies, depending on depending on the wishes of the colonialists that every colonialist came up with their own ways of controlling they were not similar so why they varied why those ways of administrative ways of administration were varied it is due to the nature of the people in the colonies such as being cooperative, military strong, that is how Africans, how European were at that time made them to establish a certain way of ruling. Another is challenges. Challenges encountered during the acquiring of colonies. During the acquisition of colonies, many many African many Europeans encountered African resistance. Others they collaborated. So the the presence of resistance, either resistance or collaboration, made the the Europeans to, to decide which way of ruling will be suitable for certain society. So due to the challenges encountered during the acquiring the colonies that is by strong resistance or collaboration etc this made them to decide to have a attitude that certain way certain rule, ruling system will be suit suitable for this society or oh, this is not suitable for this society for example if they encountered strong resistance the all, all i mean all all societies where Europeans encountered strong resistance decided to use indirect rule. In other way, or oh, another side, the societies where Europeans encountered maybe less resistance, or Euro societies, African societies decided to collaborate with the Europeans. They came out with the direct rule. So the challenges encountered during the, acquire, the acquisition of colonies made Europeans to decide which way will be suitable, will be well, will be good for them to establish the colonialism. Another 
is the character of colonial power. For example, German preferred to preferred direct to rule, while British preferred indirect to rule, and French preferred assimilation policy. This is a choice of the colonial power. That if, uh, as we can see, German, he he should always use the the direct rule in her colonies. That's why we say the. At this point, we can make also as nature of the colonial power that certain, certain colonialists decided to use a certain way of ruling system, regardless in which kind of society. That that's why we can say the all all colonies which were ruled by the French, they were French you preferred to use the assimilation policy. That's why they decided this is our reasons these are reasons which made certain colonialists to decide which way of ruling system now why colonialists introduced the different administrative system after the establishment of the colonial rule i elaborate the previous points as follow the first reason is to change the form or tradition of African system of administration. To change the form or tradition of African African system after the system of what of administration. As before the coming of colonialists, we ha we had our own way of what of administration. Administration. That's th therefore. After the coming of Europeans decided to change our form and introducing their form. That's why it was necessary for them to establish their way of what ruling or administrative system. The next point is to maintain or to ensure effective occupation or effective control of the colonies socially, politically, and economically. Without establishing the colonial administrative system, we won't maintain or we won't ensure the effective control of the colonies. So in order to have the colony even in our daily societies, in order to have the full control, you have to establish your own way of ruling. That is government. That's why they Colonialism, colonialist too, decided to establish the colonial administrative system. Another point is maximization of profit through colonial exploitation by selling out a system of administration which favored colonialists. Maximization, this was the, the only one target why they established, they came in Africa. So, in order to make sure that they exploit us the the there are there are a need of establishing the colonial administrative system the next one is to ensure peace and harmony in colonies after first day reactions or resistances during the establishment of colonial rule in order to ensure peace in Hama because after the coming of colonialists they encountered the resistance. You can see Ho He He and Yao resistance, Chimulenga and any any more resistance. So in order to elaborate in order to 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 uh, er to arouse those resistances there are a need of establishing the word the government that is the colonial administrative system the way of ruling the next one is to prepare the suitable and conducive environment for establishment of colonial economy yeah, the, the main target of the colonialists to come in Africa was to establish in order to make themselves rich in economy. So in order to succeed the colonial economy, then 
there are a great need of having colonial administrative system. The next one is to fulfill agreement reached during the Berlin Conference of 1884-1885 on effective occupation of colonies. At, during the Berlin Conference, they agreed that the colonialists, they have to ensure the effective occupation of the colonies. So there are a need to establish this first them or acted as a catalyst for them to establish the colonial administrative system. Therefore, reasons behind the reasons behind the establishment of different colonial administrative system in Africa after the colonies managed to defeat Africa was due to the many resistance as I said before. Colonialists faced the why they were trying to introduce colonial rule in Africa. That the main reason why they started to establish the colonial administrative system, it was due to those reasons which they faced during the establishment of what? During the scramble for and partition, during the establishment of colonial rule. Africans were not aware with the situation of being colonized by what? By colonialists. That's why they came out with the, they started to establish the colonial administrative system in order to maintain the full control of what? Of ruling. Other point is due to the language problems. Another is lack of enough, enough manpower since they were few in number. Another is colonialists needed a lot of funds to run their activities. So let's now jump to the jump and see the types or forms of colonial administrative system. As I said before that every colonialist decided in his or her own way of ruling. Therefore, due, due to that administrative system in Africa, which African continent expressly were for. The first one is direct to rule, the next one indirect to rule, assimilation police and association police. Let's look on the indirect rule. Direct rule was a form or type of colonial administrative system applied by chairman, where Africans were ruled directly without local rulers' support. This is first was applied by, by German in her colonies. The second one is African, no. European governors applied it directly to African without the support from the local rulers. It was applied in Namibia, Tanganyika, and Togo, Togo, and etc. There are so many. So, in the col in the German colonies, the only way where which German preferred was the direct rule, where Europeans that ruled or administered African directly. The next one is indirect rule. Indirect rule was a form of administrative system applied by the British where Africans were ruled indirect through the local rulers support. Here is, you can say, is a very serious of direct rule. While here Europeans came to African directly, he, but in contrast, indirect rule, British were, were, let me read again, direct rule, a form of administrative system applied by the British, whereby African were ruled indirectly and not direct as local ruler where they, they got support from the local rulers. Example of the countries which experienced this is 
Uganda and Nigeria as well as Tanganyika because Tanganyika experienced the the before the war before the World War One Tanganyika were governed by the were German but after the World War Tanganyika was under the British so we experienced the direct rule and indirect rule too. The next one is assimilation police. This was French administrative system applied in her colonies, which turned African to be like French citizen. The assimilation from the word similar, looking similar like so. In the assimilation police, African were were needed to behave or to resemble like French citizen. African who were assimilated or who were changed to be Frenchmen were called the assimilators. So if African succeeded to behave to resemble like French citizen, to assimilate, to look similar to, they were known as assimilado. Now we see on the association police. Association was the French administrative system which repressed the assimilation policy, which did not aim at turning Africans into French citizens. Instead, it considered African culture. So, also this used by French not to not force the African to resemble like French citizen, but instead it considered African culture. And in the assimilation police, African were to, to adopt the French culture. But contrast to this, the, the African citizen maintained their culture. This used by French also by Portugal in their colonies. Therefore, the above colonial system were different from one colonial power to another. As I said before, by conclusion, I say by conclusion. For example, British preferred to use indirect rule in her colonies such as Nigeria, Havana and Sierra Leone, while German used the direct rule in her colonies such as Tanganyika, Congo, Namibia and Angola and also Mozambique while French used the assimilation policy in Algeria and Senegal. Now let's try to analyze one after another in details. Starting with indirect rule, as I said before, the direct, indirect rule was applied by British in her colonies where local rulers were allowed to participate in colonial administration by implementing the colonial policies. So, indirect rule was British administrative system. British administrative system which used the local rulers or local chiefs to implement British colonial policies. Within indirect rule, African local rulers or chiefs were given chance or allowed to govern their fellow Africans through orders in the supervision from the British colonial governors or from colonial government. So with indirect rule Africans meet with their fellow, their local chiefs and were obeying the order from their local chiefs as, as theirs, though they were from the order from the colonial governors. So local chiefs supervised or supervised the orders from the, the colonial governors. That's why you can see that's why we say it as indirect as we africans meet mate with so indirect rule where rule where rule ruling system where african met with their chiefs as and as they were 
following or obeying order from the upper part who are colo colonialism colonialists the main governor who known was British governor with the name as Lord Lugardi who were the main supervisor of indirect rule in Africa now let's see the features of indirect rule the first one is chiefs were appointed who were appointed required to implement British policies to their fellow Africans that chiefs were appointed so as to implement in, so as to supervise the British policies to their fellow Africans the another one is indirect rule forced the and collected tax from people it was the for economic purpose that's why it was the only way to exploit therefore chiefs were used the to to tell or to talk with their fellow Africans to to pay taxes and Africans they were just paying taxes as they think that it was tax ordered by a uh, chief maybe chief or or Mwini. it depends on the nature of the society so the this system forced the African to pay to watch to pay taxes the next one indirect tool aimed at getting cheap labor yeah as as order were from the chief so it was easy for african to obey their local rulers because they know that this is my chief maybe ruler or demi depending on the nature of society so african were able to obey those those orders from the europeans as they thought that it is from our local chief another is indirect rule forces british law and ordinances now let's see the next one is indirect rule aimed at maintaining peace and harmony on behalf of the British government in order to have peace in order for them not to resist against the colonialism they have to use their local rulers that's why they decided to use indirect rule therefore chiefs who were appointed to implement to implement British government policies became a part of British colonial government hence chiefs were favored at a given thing since they were implement, implementing the colonial government and colonial policies they became part of the colonial government at the lower stage so they have certain favor let's see those favors as Chiefs were given colonial protection, they were, being, they were protected, another, they were paid salaries, they got salaries for their work, another, chiefs were given good accommodation, for example, houses and even other social services like education, the chiefs', chiefs sons were allowed to go to school. Chiefs' family included sons and daughters who were given good social services like education, as I said before. The next one is chiefs were given some chiefs in order to, for them to be the puppet for British. Now let's see why British used the or applied direct rule. Do you think why? Let's discuss together. First is lack of manpower. British were few in number, hence used the indirect rule because it was very difficult to rule large African population without assistance. Since they were few in number, that's why they decided to use the uh, the local rulers to support them because the African population were large in number. So the assistance from the local rulers were necessary for at that time 
Now, let's see the next one is communication problems. Or communication problems, you can say also as language problem. British, British adopted indirect rule because they had no good information link with the Africans than African local rulers such as chiefs and kings. Communication problems. As we know, British used the English English language, and African used their local languages. So, in order for them to succeed, in order to to work, to succeed, I mean to rule well, there are need of having link between the between the British and the people. So, chiefs or kings acted as a link together i mean when information from the from the british governors passing through the chiefs then implemented by the the majority so due to the communication problems they decided to to use the indirect rule another is to avoid resistance the British used the indirect rule because they wanted to avoid resistance since they since there was no direct contact between Africans and British but Africans with their rulers in order to avoid resistance Africa British government decided to introduce indirect rule since African rulers had the contact, direct contact with their people co as compared to British governors. The next one is the system was economically cheap. The African chiefs were not directly paid by the colonial government. African chiefs were not directly paid by the colonial government. Also, the African chiefs could not demand services from the colonial government such as accommodation, transport and medical services. No directly paid. They were just being favored like having house or having them the education service so it was cheap for them to apply this way of ruling system the next one number of colonies britain the number due to the number of colonies britain had many colonies in africa here you can say that british had a large number of colonies in africa but had very few officials to dispose in these colonies as I said before, the large number of popula population in Africa compared to the number of colonial officials. That's why they decided to use their, our local chiefs to represent them. The colonial office offices were not enough to dispose from the grassroots level and up to above. So African native thought that they were still under their chiefs. You see, African thought that they were still under their chiefs. Orders given by the, the colonizers. So it was easier for the Africans to obey those orders since they thought that it was from their local chiefs and kings. Now, Let's see the next one. Resistance, as said, another is language barrier. Another is the system ensured the tax collection, effective tax collection. The another suitable point is tropical disease, which killed many British personnel. Tropical disease like this, like malaria, which this which killed many Europeans there and it was not sweet of the the tropical condition of Africa many African part were not suitable for the survival of war of Europeans that's why 
they use the, our local rulers to represent them in, in, instead of going them directly. As you can see here in Tanzania, it, was, it is in hot. It is, we, Tanzania experienced hot climatic condition, which is not suitable for the survival of Europeans. Also, we have our disease, our own disease like malaria. This is not suitable for them to survive. That's why they decided to use indirect rule. There are some parts which experience the, like Nigeria. Now they see to the, they see the. Let's see the structure of the British indirect rule. How was it? Indirect rule administrative system, which was applied by British in our colonies, arranged the different structure to ensure effective colonial control over the colon over the colon and good administrative machinery which will prepare conducive environment for establishment of colonial economy. As we can see in our nowadays government in Tanzania, it has their own structure. Like that. For example, you can see the president at the top, then the parliament, legislature, something like that. So also in the indirect rule had their own structure. The first structure the structure was set up to the up to the bottom. At the up here, we meet with the secre colonial secretary who stayed in London, United Kingdom. At the upper part here was, was occupied by the colonial secretary who stayed in London. The next one after the upper, the second one is governor appointed in UK and the heart in the colonies after the war. So in the colony, the one who will see direct is the governor. As you can see in Tanzania, in Tanganyika, we have Lord Lugard. The next one is provincial commissioners who was British lived in certain regions to represent the governor. The next one is city district commissioners who was British, I mean it was white, lived in district level representing the provision commissioners. He lived with the people and they gave them order through the local rulers. The lower part here we meet with the local chiefs who were local rulers appointed by British who were given order by the colonial officers to include the provincial commissioners. Then we meet with the headmen. Headmen, these were Africans who received the order from the local rulers or local chiefs and implement them to the people by using force once people resisted. So the majority first met with the headmen who received the order from the local rulers. Then, the local rulers received the order from the district commissioner, then provincial office commissioner, who also received order from the governor. Where governor received order from the what? From the colonial secretary. That is the structure of the. British indirect rule. Thank you. Now, I want you to to discuss and give out the answers. It is the quiz time. 
explain types of colonial administrative system applied in Africa, by addition, applied in Africa. Thank you.